a very good evening i hope all of you had a very good weekend i'm joined today by shantanu gupta who has written many books including those about uh, uttar pradesh chief minister yogi adityanath and today we are here to discuss the surprising results in uh, uttar pradesh by elections shantanu ji namast namaste namaskar how are you namaste namaste sharan how are you doing good doing very well uh, last time we were discussing the uttar pradesh election results and it was very interesting and every time i talk to you it's it's extremely insightful analysis in fact many of your predictions were right about the last elections many people criticized you thinking that you would be wrong but ultimately you were proven right on many of your predictions is bar you know many of the people actually thought that this is an impossible task for the bs uh, for for the bjp azam khan right. was vowing for revenge since 27 months he's been making emotional appeals to the voters but still yeah. why this victory why the surprise what what's your take on this mm-hmm. i think uh, i'll take it in multiple ways first of all a uh, lot of people who know the history of uh, rampur lok sabha seat and azamgarh lok sabha seat you know every lok sabha seat has its own history right it's a cosmos in itself so in 2009 right like just two elections before bjp did pull this seat ramakant yadav did win the election and after after that msy mulayam singh yadav and akhilesh yadav uh, win that seat i'm talking about azamgarh seat first right so in 2009 bjp did win the seat when bjp otherwise did not do good right so it's not like that bjp never had this seat okay that's number one uh, now coming to rampur seat in 2014 huh, dr nepal singh won the seat uh, on bjp ticket and then uh, azam khan won in 2019 right in 2019 the advantage they had is that sp and bsp came together we all know that advantage right so there was no no split in the vote uh, so to say so that's just a spark that thought uh, now coming to the politics of now right in the 2022 election in rampur uh or oh, bjp won i think just two seats i am saying the assembly seats corresponding right and azamgarh they just won one seat or i think even none right so in 2022 just which happened like three months back bjp's performance was not the great right but i'm sure all of you know that assembly elections and uh, lok sabha elections are different in multiple respects one is that who is becoming what but just on the arithmetic right because a gain in one assembly seat let's say bjp had gains in 3 3 4 4 assembly seats if you combine together in the lok sabha seat it may have a different 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 numbers right so that's one i think when uh, sharan when uh, akhilesh yadav uh, resigned from lok sabha right many competent commentators including me had a good vibe that oh wow that's good he want to spend time finally he want to take his politics seriously he wants to spend time in assembly he wants to counter yogi he wants to counter his minister in the assembly he wants to be visible right what is lok sabha where i don't know his 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 data was even lower than rahul gandhi can you imagine someone who is performing like even like rahul gandhi's attendance is almost like 49% 50% his attendance is 33% 35% so akhilesh yadav did not find time from luck from travel to lucknow to uh, delhi in last one and a half years like in 17 lok sabha 2019 till he resigned he has zero questions that's the that's how he represented the people of azamgarh in lok sabha by asking zero question and by presenting himself on only 33% uh, or 36% of the occasions right so we thought okay he's serious i think imitating him or in competition azam khan also re- resigned uh, okay uh, let me also because there is a i'm sure uh, your audience know there is a kind of a tiff between azam khan and akhilesh yadav for quite some time right since the time he's in jail and azam khan has this grudge that akhilesh yadav did not do enough to to get him released though i think party or azam khan himself put the battery of lawyer before he got bail through kapil sibal and kapil sibal is rewarded through a rajya sabha seat right so so we thought that yeah now there will be hard work right but then the bipole comes you see that akhilesh yadav did not go even to campaign and yesterday i was in multiple tv channels first of all all the spokesmen have a different line someone like a little saner one like gansham tiwari said we accept the verdict someone like uh, uh, abdul hafiz gandhi said no 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 government rigged it a typical sapa line after every election and then 
I think Akhilesh uh, said the same line that administration rigged it. And on the TV channels, they have three, four reasons why they lost, right? The Sapa. BSP, uh, B, uh, BSP put a candidate in uh, Azamgarh, so we got, uh, we lost a seat. In Rampur, BSP did not put the candidate, so they do not have a reason. <laughs> How can they blame BSP? And and even in Azamgarh, um, Sharan, uh, what's his name? Uh, its name is uh, Ramali, Jamali. Uh, the, the BSP's candidate name, right? his name is some Jamali, right? He got some two and a half lakh votes. Someone who gets two and a half lakh votes, almost 33% of the vote, you can't call that person vote katua. Right? Because he, the Mr. Jamali can say, you have cut my votes, otherwise I would have won. Right? He got 30% vote and the Sapa candidate got uh, Dharmen Yadav, who is the Chacha ka ladaka of Akhilesh Yadav, he got 33% vote. So someone got 30, 30% vote, you can't call that candidate a vote katua. Right? Because the two and a half lakh votes in any seat is a lot of votes. Right? So they are fighting their own capacity. So that's the first reason Sapa presented. That okay. Second reason they presented uh, that oh administration did not f- play foul, right? Uh, they did not say EVM this time because EVM is almost become saying EVM has almost become a joke. So they say a- administration played foul. I don't know what foul administration can play, but yeah, right. administration played foul. Third thing they said no no no, media is still not showing the truth. Yogi is not doing great work. And the fourth is which is like. In fact, I find that little disingenuous. They say, no, people are foolish. This is the new the Congress opposition. They say, no, no, Modi somehow is like a backpiper. He's sowing the people with his tunes, right? And people are blind and they, they're saying, oh, whatever Yogi Modi is saying, they're just pressing the button and they're not getting anything. They're not getting jobs. They're not getting electricity. They're not getting roads. They're not getting toilets. Just for some mesmerizing qualities of or oratory skills of Yogi and Modi, people are voting. So, Samajwadi party is not even introspecting. Right, uh, and and it's not that BJP is not facing his own set of challenges. BJP Sharon is in the phase of transition. If you know, their their state president uh, will be leaving because they don't because now he, now Sotandev Singh is a minister, right? And they never put two positions to one person. That's BJP's policy. So he's in transition phase. Uh, there there are a couple of other major organizational changes expected. BJP just won a massive election. So they are also a little exhausted, right? They won with their full might. Uh, all of that, all of that. Uh, Yogi Atanath, uh, second term, doing a lot of new policy initiatives, recharging his whole team, same same rigor of whole day monitoring, lunches. He put his, made, uh, put his weight behind. He has campaigned extensively on both the seats. They did not even invite, uh, they they gave a break to PM Narendra Modi that, okay, we will manage ourselves. So, even even bigger responsibility for the state team, right? So, and versus Akhilesh Yadav who did not even turn up. And none of the spokesmen were able to uh, explain that why Akhilesh Yadav can't come like two and a half, kilometer, two and a half hours from Lucknow to Azamgarh. Uh, thanks to Yogi Atanath with the new expressway, mm-hmm. the expressway, that he can go to his constituency in two and a half hours. And maybe a couple of more hours to Rampur. Why did not he travel? Right. The reasons, you know, what I'm hearing. The reasons I'm hearing two reasons. One, Akhilesh Yadav wanted Rampur to be lost so that Akhilesh and then Azam Khan cloud is gone forever. That's one. And in and Azam got a seat. They have a family tiff. Akhilesh Yadav wanted Dimbal Yadav to contest. Right. And now from the because in in their family it's like Akkar Bakkar Bombay Bo they keep doing okay who will fight who will fight who will fight and finally the Dharmendra Yadav the Chacha ka ladka got the ticket so I think Akhilesh has a grudge ki nahi meri bivi ko nahi ladaya ab to main campaign nahi karunga right so that's the way they're running their parties right and all these spokesmen hopefully they have the gumption to ask uh, Akhilesh Yadav that why didn't you campaign why don't you go to Parliament why didn't you ask a question about Azamgarh in the last one and a half years right. And you you ask us to win the seat all of a sudden now. Uh, so this is, I think, my take. Uh, sorry, long answer to your long uh, to short question. This is my take on how how it happened and uh, why it happened. Yeah. Well, what are the reasons for the BJP's victory in particular? Because especially a seat like Rampur is not very easy to win, right. considering not just the demographics. But the fact that, uh, you know, even the Prime Minister and senior leaders were absent uh, to campaign, one of the factors with which it's credited is uh, the smooth vote share transfer from the BSP. So, uh, you know, what's your observation on that? See, uh, see two things. One is uh, in Azamgarh, BJP did contest, uh, BSP did contest. Uh, 
uh, I saw uh, Mr. Jamali contested. We got 2.5 lakh votes, 30 percent of the vote. So there, uh, kind of it helped BJP. Uh, it diverted the votes. Uh, Nirawa, uh, he is quite popular. Last time also, he got massive votes. Though he he, he, he fell short, but again he got two three lakhs vote even last time. So and a lot of people like someone like Gorakhpur uh, MP uh, Manoj Tiwari, who are like kind of his colleagues in the Bhojpur industry, they all campaigned. They are a massive superstar in that part of uh, Uttar Pradesh, that part of India. Uh, so, as I told you, they put their weight behind and arithmetic wise, BSP did help, right? Here, BSP did not contest, right? So, the vote cutting of the Muslim vote did not happen. But the, interestingly, out of the out of the five assembly segments, in the three assembly segments where Muslims are in majority, there also BJP was ahead by 2,000, 3,000 votes, not by huge margins. And Rampur seat, uh, BJP won by almost 40, 42,000 votes. Uh, the Azam Khan, they pulled, uh, the Azam Khan, not Azam Khan seat, they only pulled by 8,000 odd votes. But the Rampur, right. they pulled by 42,000 votes. Uh, so in the two uh, Hindu dominated constituencies, out of the assembly mm-hmm. constituencies I'm divided into, they won by decent margins, almost by 12, 12, 13, 13,000. Uh, and in the Muslim dominated ones also. So I'll be quite, I'll not be surprised if because CSDS and a couple of other organizations do a post poll analysis of the caste equation, the religion equation. Uh, like in assembly election where BJP got almost 8 to 9 percent of Muslim vote, I'll not be surprised that BJP started getting some uh, share of Muslim votes also because, right. because it seems uh, almost 27 percent of the schemes are going to Muslim in UP and in various parts of India. Against their population of fourteen to eighteen percent, so in sabka saath sabka I remember vikas, you was telling really, really, me just last time when we were having the conversation that actively Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and the entire state machinery is basically working towards winning many of these so-called minority bastions as well, and uh, to a certain extent it did reflect in the results, but they were not completely successful in the assembly elections. But this time it is actually showing results. And generally, uh, it is said that the by-elections do not go in BJP's favor. But this time, you know, even with uh, Sangrur, uh, Amarmi Party losing it, and now in Uttar Pradesh, the results show something very differently. Uh, and I think I, I, I also remember that when you said this uh, observation that the BJP wanted to take these seats very seriously, there was a lot of backlash from the typical A category voters for the BJP who said, you know, why why is the BJP being too focused on uh, minor, minority schemes? This is again appeasement and they earned a lot of backlash. But I think it has worked out. So in terms of those governance, uh, what, what do you observe? Obviously, we cannot analyze it completely. Uh, but I'm sure there is a particular trend in which uh, it has been moving. So, you know, your thoughts on that? So, first of all, I think BJP, if you remember last time, 2018, BJP, when Yogi Atanath has to leave his seat from Gorakhpur and Keshav Prasad Maurya, the deputy chief minister then and now also, he has to leave his seat from Fulpur, almost in a similar fashion as Akhilesh and Azam Khan left the seat. And in the subsequent year, uh, the election happened and BJP lost both the seats, right? Uh, uh, the common thing was voting percentage was low. Uh, even then and now in bipoles, and that's the the nature of bipoles. Bipoles do not create huge enthusiasm in people, and the voting percentages are normally low in bipoles. But again, BJP has learned a lesson, right? And that time BJP came on camera. BJP spokesperson came on camera uh, as as someone like Yogi Atanath came on camera. He said, "We got overconfident. And, oh, this Yogi Atanath seat will win in any ways. This is full pull seat. We will win in any ways." And they came on camera versus a uh, Samajwadi party who is saying administration ne hara diya, BSP ne hara diya, media ne hara diya, right? BJP uh, accepted his mistake and worked fully. And when they were, when they also knew that Prime Minister may not be available, that he is extensively outside, outside India, a lot of foreign trips are planned, he may not be able to give time. So even more responsibility, when they knew that BJP's organization and UP is in transition, right? A couple of major leadership changes can happen very soon, right? Even then, they, they put their house together, gave the tickets meticulously, made sure they campaigned with with a local regional leader who who are who are have uh, emphasis and and a clout in that area, and like booth by booth, typically they won it. So I think Yogi's Modi's juggernaut is 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 almost unstoppable, and now. 
I think yesterday, I think Yogi or someone said that now BJP winning 80 seats in in the coming Lok Sabha is not like very far-fetched if they do it very meticulously, clinically, seat by seat. It's not, if they win Rampur, which is 51% Muslim, Muslim population, they can win almost anything. And this was in spite of the entire bulldozer campaign that was going on in the media, you know, the, the last couple of months. See, bulldozer campaign, whenever media runs against... Or, or is media, pehle, I think it media. was a militant monk in 2017. I think we spoke about that as well. Exactly, exactly. So, I think so. I think such campaigns, I think my advice to the media, if they really want to take Modi Yogi by, by the thorns, by the horn, sorry, right? Uh, these campaigns are in most of the cases counterintuitive, right? Because all these Lutians media and other typical five-star commentators, they they don't travel to the field. They don't. You know, people have a huge reverence for this bulldozer uh, camp justice, if I can use the word, uh, right? Because bulldozers are not going on mowing the houses of the poor. Whose bulldozer are going to Azam Khan's? Uh, illegally acquired property or Atik Ahmed or even Vikas Dubey uh, for that matter, uh, right? Or in, in now this case, uh, the pump person from Prayag, right? Uh, so, bulldozer justice have a huge reverence among people. They have seen that how illegally acqu- acquired land in Samajwadi Party government and BSP government, almost the land share on worth 2,000 crore rupees is taken back. Private lands or government lands. So, people... And, and yeah, and in multiple of these cases, the other party did went to the court. But UP police and, and, and the Yogi, Yogi administration won those all those cases. So they have all the procedures also followed. It's not like as if it made out to be in TV. No, no, no. Yogi thought one day and pulled out somebody's house. They have the full procedure of giving one notice, giving another notice, Chipkao, which called it Chaspa, the, the third notice, and then only going ahead with using the bulldozer. Uh, right? And giving... And as we are talk, talking today, now, a couple of bullies are already acting. Not in the areas where rights are happening. Not in the areas where there is Muslim or Hindu. or The only fundamental phenomena is wherever there is illegal construction. On illegal land or with an illegal map. Right? That's already happening. Uh, right? Yeah, you're right. But with, with all this vicious campaign, uh, Delhi, Lutians, Khan market campaign, with have no... Reverence, no connect to the ground. Uh, Yogi is winning seats like Rampur and Nazgul. That's a lesson so to the this government. Can actually, cause. see this as a form of justice that uh, you know that can come by quickly, uh, in, in a sense of a fast track system. I think this happened in the case of a rape case in Hyderabad as well, where there was popular support to the police when um, you, you know the vehicle tiptoed and then uh, the subsequent incidents happened. Uh, uh, but but when we are to look at these issues in binaries ki ye hindu hindu musliman ka issue hai then one can naturally doubt or feel that the muslim community may feel a little insecure but it's so surprising about how perceptions actually work differently on the ground i think you're right because i think the people have seen uh, though uh, a, a typical tv commentator may only list the muslim houses which has got the bulldozer doors uh, I think someone like me will remind that Vikas Dube also got that rose, right? Vijay Mishra from Prayag also got that rose, right? Uh, Gujar family also got rose. In fact, uh, I'll remind you. On 21st August, it'll be a spectacle, a huge super tech tower in Noida, whose, whose builder is some Mr. Arora. Super tech is a huge uh, real estate company. The huge tower has some 20, 25 floors, which are standing from last couple of years on a legal land, will be blasted. After the court order, after taking the court order, right? So a lot of lot of farmhouses in Noida are removed and which are owned by people from all religions. So only thing what people do, people just take the whole list of uh, hundred houses mode, pick the Muslim names, chant them uh, in, in in high decibel in all the TV TV cameras, and they say, oh my God, Muslims are Muslims are targeted. That's not the case, right? It was not just yeah. about Muslims. I think when Vikas Dubey's encounter happened, there were a lot of journalists who said that there will be a Brahmin backlash as well. Yeah, so so, so <laughs> I think sometimes it's Brahmin backlash, sometimes it's Banya backlash, sometimes it's Thakur backlash, sometimes Muslim backlash. After a while, they will they will realize that it's a backlash against uh, uh, not any community; it's backlash against the illegal property holders. 
I think that's that's we should remember. And 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 again, I'll not uh, call it a quick uh, police justice because in all these cases, uh, Yogi administration follow the full procedure, and that's why uh, all these cases uh, were were verified in the courts, and they got a clean shit in the courts of law. As far as the caste equation is concerned, because everybody discusses about the caste equation, जब हम उत्तर प्रदेश के बारे में बात करते हैं. So you know, how have you seen it uh, transform and you know basically take a turn with uh, Modi and uh, Yogi Adityanath being at the center of governance uh, systems yeah. in yeah. Uttar Pradesh over yeah. the years? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this phenomena is not only in Uttar Pradesh; this is a pan-India phenomena. Uh, and uh, when you have a double engine as strong as Yogi Adityanath, this phenomena multiplies even faster. And what is the phenomena? See, before 2014, Congress uh, taught a very easy trick to win elections, right? Appease the Muslims, get take their vote en masse, and try to divide Hindus into Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaish, this caste, this caste, and try to take one bloc or the other, right? So, so Mayawati say, I will take Neem Bhim formula. Akhilesh Yadav said, I'll say I'm M Y formula, Muslim Yadav formula. Lalu Prasad also said, I'll say uh, M Y formula. Someone became netas of the Gola, someone became Netas or Reddies or Patels. That's how Congress taught the politics to this country, right? Then came Narendra Modi uh, in 2014. He said, "I will create an. I will try to consolidate this." And he consolidated uh, the vote vote banks in two counts. One is on the cultural Hindu nationalism, right? That it's not shameful. It's not you. You need not to be apologetic to be Hindu. Right, and all such valid causes, causes which are legally valid, are championed. That's one. So this identity of caste became the identity of a Hindu. Second, second plank that Narendra Modi and someone like Yogi Adityanath played is that now my voter is identified as a beneficiary among the various schemes, be it toilet, be it gas, uh, be it house, be it DBT. If you go to any village, which I went to multiple of them during during my the research of my last book on Yogi Adityanath, I see like people across caste, people across religions are getting really benefits of those schemes. Right? In fact, uh, many times me the researcher got to know about many schemes from when I travelled uh, in in the hinterlands of UP. Right? So this beneficiary vote bank and a Hindu vote bank. This has shed the typical typical feeling of someone like Akhilesh Yadav ki Yadav vote to meri pocket mein. Muslim vote to meri pocket mein. So now nobody can claim a hegemony on any vote bank. Now, if you perform, you will get voted. If you don't perform, you will get voted out. So I think this is a new grammar that someone like Narendra Modi has written, and someone like Yogi Adityanath has like uh, darkened it even further. So the voters have decided that it would be either perform or perish, and that's the message to all the political parties in Uttar Pradesh. Thank you so much for joining me today for this conversation. It's been lovely speaking to you again. And uh, for the benefit of our viewers, please do tell us what you're working on next, if you're allowed to tell. Is there anything? Uh, I'm not any, working any on anything political. I think anytime soon. I'm not working on anything political. Uh, I, I was working on this, uh, the Ramayana school from last two years. I have taught hundreds, uh, not even hundred thousands of participants on what leadership lessons and life lessons and entrepreneurship lessons you can derive from the age-old text of Ramayana. So now I'm planning to write a self-help series. I'm trying to convert my sessions into a set of books. Some on entrepreneurship based on Ramayana, some on parenting based on Ramayana. So hopefully by the year end, I'll be able to. Uh, I'm working on it from quite some time, but in between, Yogi book, BJP book came, so that project got delayed. So now I'm back on the Sri Ram project, and maybe I'll do a self-help series based on Ramayana. Very good luck to you with that, and uh, we look forward to reading those books. uh would it be too early to ask you that this would perhaps be a trend setter for 2024 lok sabha elections i think it will be not only because normally i don't read much into the bipoles right because bipoles yeah. at times uh give you very different uh analysis right and they are not they are not a good sample for a larger election but a bipole which just happened two months after Where BJP, in fact, lost those seats, assembly segment side, which are tough seats, where are Muslim-dominated seats. So the only inference one can make, an easy inference, that if worked hard, if vote banks are managed properly, if work, if beneficiary vote banks are managed and done properly, 
BJP can won even Muslim dominated seats. So, so the way BJP's machinery is working, the organizational machinery, and with mascots and with brand ambassadors like Yogi and Narendra Modi, it'll be not hard for BJP to score 80 out of 80, which it scored in a couple of states in 14 and 19. I think Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, in a couple of states, BJP and Gujarat, they did full by full. So, UP can be one of those states where BJP can score full by full. Well, we shall only wait and watch what happens in 2024. Thank you so much, Shantanuji, for joining us. Viewers, please do let us know what you thought about this conversation in the comment section below. We'll be producing more such conversations in the future. And do remember that the only way that you can support us is by clicking on the subscribe button. This is your host, Sharon Sethi. Until next time, signing off.